Hello, everybody, and thank you for registering in Biology When I Know. The goal of this video today is to help you study better, to help you identify the blind spots in your knowledge so that once you study, you get to understand that there are things that you might not be aware of. So you need to be more mindful about what you know so that you can identify what you don't know. So this might sound a little bit weird, but there are things that we know and we usually know what we know, don't we? Right? We know something about a subject and we know what we know about the subject. In early 2000, the then Secretary of Defense for the United States, his name was Donald Rumsfeld, he said something that made people laugh back then. But I remember hearing this and thinking, you know, that makes sense. So let's read this. It goes like this. Reports that say that something hasn't happened are always interesting to me, because as we know, there are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. So, it might be really obvious that, yeah, there are things that I know, and I'm aware of what I know, and I'm also aware of what I don't know, right? So, when we're studying something, we are normally looking for things that we don't know and to learn that so that we know more about the subject. The difficult part here is not to identify what we know, and not to ident identify what we know we don't know, but to discover what we don't know about something that we don't know. So the basically the unknown unknowns. And identifying those unknown unknowns is key to having great marks in a course, if that's important to you, obviously. So in the next few slides, we're going to explore a mechanism, explore some kind of a system that will allow you to discover the things that you don't know, but you're not aware that you don't know. So first, let's start with a question. So I'm going to give you an hypothetical uh, situation. So let's say that you have an exam and you studied for that exam. For that exam, you did you know, the exercises, the readings, you watched the videos. You did everything that you think you needed to do. And you, uh, you write the exam, and then you get the exam back, and then you get, let's say, 75%, right? So it's not a bad mark, but maybe, uh, maybe you wanted to have more than that. Maybe you're totally satisfied. Maybe you're surprised that you got 75%. It doesn't really matter. But if you want to understand where the 25% is missing, what's missing there, and how to get, you know, higher than 75% if you are interested, then this video is for you. So in this next slide here, I'm going to show you something. So you see, this slide is all about consistency in behavior. So let me explain that. So let's go back to our first exam, right? So first exam, we got 75%. Now, I can tell you without, you know, right at the beginning of the semester, without you even writing the second and the third exam, I am pretty sure that the next two exams, the marks you're going to get are very close to 75%. Let's say give and take 5%. It, it could basically vary between 70 to 80% for exam number two and exam number three. That doesn't mean there's no exceptions. Yes, it's possible you have a very, very high mark. It's possible you have a low mark as well. But 
after more than 20 years of teaching, I've noticed that for the most part, the mark you'll get at exam, exam number one will be very consistent throughout the semester. So basically, exam number two, you're going to get a mark close to 75. Exam number three, same thing. So what we need to understand is, why is it like this? What's the reason why it's like that? And most importantly is, can I change this? Is there something I can do to change this? So now let's address the first question. Why is it this way? The reason why it's like this is that if you had a mark of 75% for your first exam, and then you get basically a mark that's very similar for exam number two, is that you probably use the same method of studying for exam number two. Basically, you repeated the same pattern, something that you've done for exam number one. And the instructor is the same, very likely, and the style of exam is basically the same. So that is not really a variable. The variable is what you can do. But since you didn't change anything, maybe because you're satisfied with your mark, it's possible, or you're not exactly sure what to do, then your mark for exam number two is going to be the same. 75 plus or minus something. And same thing for exam number three, as we've discussed before. Now let's look at the second question. The second question is, can't I change this? Is there something I can do to change this? Obviously, the answer is yes. So what if I told you that you can almost guarantee there's no guarantees, obviously, but, you know, I'm very, very confident that I can teach you how to increase your mark by at least 10%. It's not free. There's something you'll need to do for that, obviously. You'll need to change something. But my question is, what if I told you that you can increase your mark by 10% or more in understanding that there's work that needs to be done here, would you do it? Let's look at how this will work. Now, here's how you can actually change things and very likely improve your marks. Okay, so for example, think of something that you learned very recently. That could be, you know, sitting in a classroom, it could be something you read. It could be a video you watched. It could be documentary. It doesn't need to be academic. It doesn't need to be, you know, uh, part of this class. It can be anything, basically. But something that, you know, allowed you to understand something. So you learned something, right? So I want you to think about that. Now, after you watch your video, after you sat in class, whatever, after you're learning, right, ask yourself... How, how well do I know this subject, right? So think of that subject. Think of what you learned. And you know that there is a beginning to that, you know, learning and to, the, to what you need to know about the subject. And then there's an end to it, right? So it starts somewhere and it ends somewhere else. It doesn't mean you know everything about it. It just means that you're learning as a beginning. And then there's a limit to the, the amount of things you know. So... And there's a, some end to that. So that's what I mean by with what there is to know. Now, you might think that your knowledge, your current knowledge, looks like this, right? So we have the beginning here, we have the end, and then the red line with it, within this, you know, range of knowledge is what you think your current knowledge is about that subject, right? So you sat in a class, you watched a video, you watched a documentary, you probably did not absorb everything. Who does, right? So if I told you, okay, well, on a scale from 1 to 10, what do you think your current knowledge is? And 
it is very likely that you will underestimate your current knowledge. So you you might think, well, I think maybe I know like 50%, maybe 40%. I'm not sure. Very rarely someone will say, I understand everything about this, right? So unless you, you know, unless you really watch this for many times, you know, watch this video a few times, if it's the first time and you're new to this subject, then very likely you won't think you know everything. Now, in fact, your perception is probably lower than what the reality is. The reality is that you probably know more than you think. I'm very confident that you don't know everything. I'm very confident that your perception is lower than what you know in reality. Now, the real question is, how would you know what you know? But most importantly, how would you know what you do not know? So, you know something about this subject. You know you don't know everything, but how do you know what you know? And most importantly, what is it that you do not know? And there's a way to do this. It's quite simple. It's just to tell a story. Just go on and tell that story. Don't leave it all in your head. Tell that story. Yes, really, why? Because when we keep information in our head, it's a concept. It's stored somewhere in our brain, in our neurons, and we have a memory. And that memory can fade we can have a false sense of how, you know, good the memory is, and we think we know enough. When we verbalize what we know, so basically when we hear ourselves talking about something, then something happens. We realize we become aware of what we know. If it's still in your brain, you might not be aware of what you know. You might not be aware. You're certainly not aware of what you don't know. However, when you do tell that story, when you hear yourself talking, then you become aware of the missing pieces. And that's the important part. Now, I don't care who you talk to. It could be anyone, it could be your dog, or it could even be yourself, you know, looking in a mirror and talking to yourself. It doesn't really matter as long as you hear your own voice. That's the most important part. Now, this is what I call the blah blah power, right? Remember, what you think you know, your perception is very likely to be the amount of information you think you know is probably lower than what it is in reality. But you'll never be aware of that until you actually hear yourself talking about something. But there is a catch. And here, here's here what it is. When you are expressing yourself, when you're speaking, you're hearing yourself giving an explanation at some point, you will hit a point where you're not sure anymore, and you probably will, it will probably go like this. You'll say, oh, um, well, this I'm not sure, but I know this and this and this, but this next thing, hmm, I'm, I'm not sure if I know that actually. So you see those little gray spaces between that orange line there? This is what I call the gaps. You need to mine those gaps. You know your 10% plus that I was talking to you, telling you about earlier? This is where you'll find that. If you keep only, and if you only stick to what you know, then your mark is going to remain the same. However, if you mine those gaps, and if you make sure you fill those gaps with current knowledge, 
to enrich what you already know, then I can guarantee that your marks, is, your marks are going to get higher. So now the question is, how do I know what my gaps are? Well, that's, not a, that's the, the difficult part, right? There are many ways to do this. And in my next video, this is what we're going to talk about.